Hello, gorgeous people. Welcome to another TV Central One on One podcast. I'm Aaron Ryan. This is episode 17 of 2024. Today, we dive into a groundbreaking initiative inspired by the shocking findings of the Aged Care Royal Commission, which revealed high rates of malnutrition among older adults in aged care facilities. Leading this ambitious social experiment to transform meals and the dining experience at a Perth aged care home is none other than respected Australian food icon, Maggie Beer. Her latest series, Maggie Beer's Big Mission, is about breaking down barriers, encouraging staff and management to think differently, and showing that there are better ways to care for residents. The show challenges outdated practices and strives to ensure that older adults live well right to the end of life. Maggie Beer is not just an Australian food icon, she's a vital voice in any discussion about food and flavour. One of the highlights of her career was being named Senior Australian of the Year in 2010. This accolade led her to a new path, inspiring her to address the urgent need for change in the food and dining experience within the aged care sector. In April 2014, Maggie established the Maggie Beer Foundation, alongside a board of industry leaders, professors and health advisors. They all share the belief that beautiful seasonal food is key to the well-being of aged care residents. You may know Maggie from shows like The Cook and the Chef, Master Chef Australia and The Great Australian Bake Off. However, her new series is not just educational, it's crucial and relevant to every Australian. On a personal note, this series hits close to home. Growing up near the aged care facility featured in the series and still living in Perth, I recently took a month off pod- podcasting after the deaths of my best friend and my nana, who passed away in an aged care facility here in Perth. This series, while raw, felt incredibly special. Maggie presents it with honesty, integrity, dignity and hope making many of the themes deeply relatable. I'm thrilled to have the heartbeat of the series and Aussie icon Maggie Beer AO here with us today. Maggie, thank you for joining me at TV Central. Oh, my gosh, Aaron. (laughs) Thank you. I'm pleased to talk. Really, I am. (laughs) It's so lovely having you here. For me, the the heart of the series was was its honesty. It wasn't just about showcasing um, an idea with positive feedback and moving on. It included challenges, setbacks, reluctance, and even a resident calling your new porridge tacky. (laughs) Was it important for you that the series remained raw and truthful, even when it wasn't always favourable to the premise? Absolutely. That was the the whole point was to really put it out there and to have to have the home um, to be brave enough to show warts and all as a baseline and then see what came of that. It was so important. There's no point in having rose colored glasses and and having it all be positive because that doesn't give other homes something to hold on to. We wanted it to be um, a stepping stone where people could pick up the pieces that they could manage at this time and at the other homes that is. Um, so my hat goes off to everyone at Meath for being involved. I want to highlight a quote from Tony Jones. People don't like change. I don't Mm. like change. When you become familiar with what you're doing and you think that you're doing it really well, it's hard to step outside of that comfort zone. The reluctance and resistance from the executive team was quite noticeable and quite frankly uncomfortable to watch. It left me feeling discouraged. If a visit from an icon and order of a straight recipient like yourself isn't enough to inspire a motivation for change, what hope is there for other families that don't have Maggie Beer and a camera crew? How does this impact your outlook on transforming aged care more broadly? Okay, it was it was uncomfortable. It was difficult to accept that that feeling, and yet I had to understand how difficult change, how how challenging change is for most people. And and, and to accept and just with the expertise of uh, both Elizabeth and Julie as change agents, that was the key to helping them come to terms with and listening and finding, finding uh, finding ways to get through barriers and roadblocks. Now, not all of them could be got through, but I do know that I did not 
even believe that there would be such complexities and such roadblocks until I started. But I'm now open to it and change agents are the solution. People can't always do it on their own. Mm. Well, with that, did you did you ever feel like this was more work than you anticipated? It seemed like oh. uh, many <laughs> residents had had very low expectations. I think with I think it was Merle that um, even referring to the facility as an institution. Does this yes. harsh reality break your heart? This was really hard to take, and in fact, I was very down about it that day. And then I decided that no. Um, uh, what I needed to do was just understand that it had to be a step-by-step process. And um, uh, I would rather Merle or any of the residents be direct and tell me they didn't like something. But I was happy to say to Merle, we are not going to stay institutionalised. That is the journey. And we can do it. Yes. I, I was very down about it, yes. I think you did win her over. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> the series goes far beyond food and dining, exploring aspects like gardens, socialisation activities and creating an atmosphere of connection. While the intention was clearly good, I'm curious, who who thought a, a life-size chessboard outside would be a practical or appropriate in an aged care facility? Well, I mean, how how many years had that been there till Josh Byrne came along and um and and we looked at what was possible. But you know, Aaron, it wasn't even life size. It was uh, diminished that everyone who was uh, um an older person leaning down that far. I mean, it was just so wrong. But Josh, with the residents behind him in terms of decision making, re-engaged that whole area, that beautiful area um, upstairs on the balcony and and the courtyard. I mean, that was a great boon and uh, not everyone has got the money to do that. Oh, and also the herb garden. But yet once you think about it and look at it, it's all within the scope of any home. Absolutely. Step by step, step by step. I would suspect that due to the amount of residents most facilities cater for, there is a one size fits all, which means all residents get soft food, even though others do not require it or even like it. It means oh. that activities are not appropriate. Cert- uh, certainly uh, an issue with my nana, who had a hearing problem and was often secluded. You do explore this in the series, but holistically, how do aged care facilities focus individually? whilst delivering broadly? Okay. Firstly, um, I would hope that there are no homes these days that do just soft food for everyone because um, a percentage need it, but because it, it must not happen. And it wasn't happening here. But how do you how do you cope with the individual needs, which can be so many and so complex? So with a cook or chef feeding 129 people and 29 of them or 32 of them need very specialised um, uh, diets, it is a very hard job and needs a lot of management and training. Um, so <sighs> this is not an easy task, but it must be done and they're all always must be choice it's it's what we're aiming towards some of your creative ideas while transformative are also quite simple um many many people of that generation absolutely love gardens my nana was one of them being able to sit in a garden but more importantly contribute be part of um and and participate within the garden are, are essential if so simple and cost effective why are these ideas just not being adopted Because everyone is working so hard and it's like this Ferris wheel that never stops. So they don't have the time because they're not yet keyed into what they can do easily. And that's what we're hoping this will, uh, this series will do. You have to be able to step back and say, okay, what can we do that's going to make a difference? And giving residents focus, be it the garden, being part of the dining room, is so important to the way they feel about themselves and giving them focus and giving them interaction with the other residents as they do things together. So important, but you've got to have someone that says, got to have leadership, communication and drive to know the difference it will make. 
I, I am curious. I picked up something in the series about, I want to know your thoughts of, on uh, participation and occupational health and safety or OSH. It, it seems uh, that the residents might not be invited to cook, work in the garden or contribute um, to their own future due to legal and OSH concerns. Um, for instance, I noticed the executive team quickly focused on the OSH implications of serving your own milk, whether it be hot or cold. What, what are your views on these concerns? I, these things can be looked at and solutions found. Yes, there has to be safety for vulnerable um, uh, older people that perhaps don't have, uh, that, that need help. But there are ways, and we show in the series, as the series grows, show how it really was possible for Merle to make scones in the dining room, for them to make um, marmalade. But you've got to you've got to believe that this is really important and find solutions to it. You can't have residents going into a big commercial kitchen, but you can say, can we put an oven into the dining room so that becomes a place to be able to have those who want to do something uh, in a way that's safe and gives them gives them something to be proud of. Mm. It, it, watching Merle, you know, make those scones, it's just funny in reflection watching watching the series, how beautiful that moment actually is. Um, <laughs> it is. Finally, um, what do you hope your legacy will be regarding the aged care system in Australia? I hope that I can be part of with shining a light on this, the need for training and communication and leadership um, and to be able to give that training through our foundation uh, and other people who are doing wonderful things so we can raise the bar. But to raise the bar, we we have to put much more emphasis on the importance of what food can do for well-being and what training of care staff can do for the 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 growth of the of of the individual resident and their joy that they can have yeah. um that's good. that is what i want my legacy to be <laughs> oh, beautiful maggie this series is honest raw and a little bit uncomfortable but as jonathan majors said growth is uncomfortable you just have to embrace the discomfort if you want to expand I hope that amid the reluctance and discomfort, there is room for growth. Our aged care residents, our grandparents, and my own nana deserve better. They should live their days with a sense of belonging, purpose, connection, and dignity. Thank yes. you for shining a light on, on this matter and all that you've done and continue to do in this space. I, I, I wish we had uh, more time to discuss this even more uh, and your wonderful career, of course, but I do appreciate the time given. Maggie Beer, thank you for joining me at TV Central. Oh, thank you, Aaron. <laughs> that was Maggie Beer Ayo, a wonderful and adored Australian icon. But if you weren't in love with her before, this series will place her firmly in your hearts. Maggie Beer's big mission will begin Tuesday the 9th of July at 8.30pm on ABC TV at ABC iView. Well, that's it for this podcast. For the latest television news, streaming updates, cinema reviews, ratings, guides and podcasts, head to TV Central at tvcentral.com.au. But for now, I'm Aaron Ryan. Thank you to the wonderful Maggie Beer. Bye for now.